So when is the last time you listened to all the words of Barry McGuire's Eve of Destruction? You just got him here this morning as we kick off our Saturday morning wake-up call. I am Steve Floyd, and I am here this morning to make sure that the show gets on the air come rain or shine. I believe that the hosts of the show are on their way. I got a text here that they are, in fact, running late, but they will be here shortly. Of course, the, the show is made possible by the, um, well, it's, it's sponsorship, I guess, is the word that we'll use, but they they pay for the airtime. It's the Bennett Brothers, uh, Josh Bennett from Bighorn Enterprises and Aaron Bennett from Far North Tactical. The difference being is it's not like a regular talk show in the sense that the radio station doesn't decide who the guests are or who, who's going to be the host. It is them. It's, the, it's not just because they're the sponsors. They're actually the uh, integral part of the show themselves. I mean, that's different from other things like Problem Corner, or the Michael Duke show, or the other shows that we have on the air in the sense that this is paid air t- time, just like uh, an infomercial in a sense. So however you want to think about it, the point is that the reason why they do the show is to get people talking and to get people thinking about the issues of liberty. And while we are waiting for them to get here, I would like to read to you something which I have been thinking about this week that I, I just, I'm, I'm not really sure if this means anything these days. Listen to this. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. This is the very first amendment to the Constitution of the United States, and it was ratified in December of 1791. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. I think we got that down pretty well. I mean, there's no state or government religion that you have to be a part of. You cannot, basically, you... uh, you don't have to sign on and say, yes, I'm a member of X, Y, or Z church in order to be a member of in good standing in the government or, or in as a citizen to vote or anything else like that. However, let me ask you this. If a person is a member of a certain religion, do they find their religion disestablished? Do you know what I'm saying? Do you think about some of the radical religious groups in the United States. And and when I say that word, I'm not talking about the obvious, like the violent members, like uh, Muslims, because they're, they're a protected class. But I'm thinking about people like the Westboro Baptist Church, everybody's favorite church to hate. You know what? They spew forth a bunch of stuff that gets people riled up and angry. And you know what? They do a lot of things that I personally find reprehensible. However, are they not exercising their freedom of religion? Just something to consider, and, and the, w- the way that people are clamoring to have them shut up, one must wonder if, in fact, that First Amendment is actually going to protect them. It goes on prohibiting the free exercise thereof. And we're talking about religion. How many religious activities are prohibited? Try to have a public prayer meeting. In fact, there was a guy who was just, I mean, there have been several states here. I know that it's happened in Texas. I know it just happened in Arizona a few weeks ago, where people are being prohibited from having church meetings in their homes. And it's all about zoning and public safety and et cetera, et cetera. Well, when's the last time you saw a five, 500 people gather in a home? That's not happening. All right, what they're doing is they're they're using their zoning regulations to prevent these people from exercising their religion. How about abridging the freedom of speech? Do you really have freedom of speech? Can you say whatever you want to say? Or would you face consequences from the government? And that's the issue. It's not natural consequences. Obviously, if if I walked up to you and told you what I thought of your wife, there would be some natural consequences involved if you didn't agree with what I said, right? Now, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about abridging the freedom of speech in the sense of if there are certain things that you said that went against a government policy, you know what I'm talking about. These things are happening right now. 
the First Amendment to the United to the United States Constitution does not have any power to protect you. And in fact, I would say that it has pretty much been nullified. We don't truly have freedom of religion. We don't truly have freedom of speech. And goodness gracious, freedom of assembly? If you don't have a permit, if you don't get permission from the government to assemble, then they don't let you assemble. How, how is that the right of the people peaceably to assemble not being abridged? If you have to get a permit in advance... Do they, do they not deny permits from time to time? I mean, isn't that the whole point? Is that if they can prevent you from assembling with people to redress the grievances from the government, then aren't they, in fact, nullifying the First Amendment? Just something to think about as we begin the show today. I believe we've got, uh, entering the studio right now, Aaron Bennett from Foreign North Tactical. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Steve. And... Uh, how are you doing this fine morning? Is it a little bit wet out there, is it not? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> right. Well, welcome to uh, the studio today. Where would you like to go? Oh, well, I think I just made it where I wanted to go. Oh, well, I mean, physically you made it here, but where would you like to go metaphysically and uh, with the, the, the direction of the show today? Um, I don't know. Joshua was going to read something this morning, so I uh, kind of was waiting anxiously for that to happen you did you did leave the door propped open for him did you not but um, no Schmitty's outside oh, okay Schmitty's <laughs> good enough all right just want to make sure he could actually get in here so that I would not... like to make a mention of something that I've um, heard all week that really has been striking a chord with me everybody uh I still have Ron Paul signs up at my store which I didn't even put them up which is neither here nor there they're there so people come in, they see those Ron Paul signs, and it seems like, uh, you know, Ron Paul's no longer an item. So everybody that comes is, hey, you're not going to vote for Ron Paul, are you? I'm like, well, I don't know. Why? <laughs> because a vote for Ron Paul is a vote for Obama. <laughs> so I guess I don't understand what that means. What, what exactly does that mean? Do you do you get what that means, Steve? Well, I, no, I, got, I got that myself when I voted back in 2008 for uh, in the in the U.S. Senate race, I voted for uh, Byrd, who was running as uh, part of the, I believe he was running under the Alaska Independence ticket, but he was not running as a Republican. He was not running as a Democrat. He was a different choice, and because I voted for him, I had people telling me that I was actually voting for Begich instead of for Stevens. And uh, I think that's kind of what they're what they're meaning here with this issue of Ron Paul. But if you choose to go in and cast a vote for Ron Paul. He has no chance of winning. And therefore, since voting is no longer about doing the right thing, but about siding with the power. Oh, that's what they mean. So, uh, they mean it's uh, didn't, the right thing, it doesn't have anything to do with it. Oh, absolutely not. It's only about who's in power. And you see, you're going to be perpetuating the Democrats in charge if you vote for anything except for what the Republicans have to offer. Because there's no liberal on the planet that's going to vote for Ron Paul. I don't think anyone on the planet is going to vote for Ron Paul. Only only Martians vote for Ron. Yeah, exactly. There's this assumption that if you dare to think outside of the box of the two candidates that are offered to you, you are going to cause all of the entire space-time continuum to unravel, and we're going to float off the planet into space. So the, the funny part is we're in a um, everybody wants to have this democracy. But they want you to vote for who they want you to vote for. So if I don't vote for who they want me to vote for, I'm throwing my vote away. And if I vote my conscience, then I'm voting for the other guy. Right. If I vote purely based on my conscience of what I think is the most right thing to do, I'm told that I'm voting for the most evilest of all things. <laughs> well, obviously you are. How does that make any sense? Well, okay, think about it this way. If, if elections define what a democracy is... The people in Iraq had elections every year. They, they act as if these elections that, we, that they just had with the purple fingers was the first time they ever had elections in Iraq. That's not true. They had elections every year. And you know what? Every year they voted for Saddam Hussein because he was the only choice on the ballot. But every year they, they showed out and they participated in the democratic process and they voted for their beloved leader. Oh, that kind of sounds like our system. Well, I, it's just the difference between having one or having two. What is the difference? 
um, one of them we can feel better about when we go to bed. Yeah, I can. You can feel whatever you want to feel so if I you have enough we, uh, liquor in your system. Brother. If we're gonna base it on feeling better about one of the two candidates, then why not vote for Ron Paul? He makes me feel the best. But he's not one of the approved. But he makes me feel the best. Because he's not gonna be on the ballot. He's not a choice. You'd be throwing your vote away. No. Uh, yeah, see, I, because, of course, it, 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 if you vote for somebody who's not part of the power structure, you're challenging the power structure. You're not submitting to the way they're telling you the way things ought to be. How dare you? How dare you, sir? I don't know. Make I mean, a I mockery suppose, of I, our beloved if, if system. If I stay home and don't vote, vote for Barack Obama. That's a vote for Barack Obama, too. I already know because I've asked and I've been told. So if, so if you turn out to the voles and you and you vote for anybody not Barack Obama, you're voting for Barack Obama. And it, well, unless you vote for Mitt Romney, uh, or or if you stay home and don't for, vote, so basically, uh, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. That's kind of how I feel about either one of those candidates. That's exactly. How, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's well, that's exactly the choice we've been presented. We've got uh, communism or communism light. Uh, sounds like a great choice. You know, if I went over to somebody's house and they, I asked them, hey, what's what's for dinner? What are you cooking tonight? And they went, well, I've got cat poo, or I've got dog poo. What would you like? I prefer to uh, clean up dog poo. Cat poo's horrible. No, but if you're, are you are you going to eat it? Well, sure. If I had to oh. choose between the two, I would eat dog poo. You know what I would choose to do? I would choose to say thanks for having me over, but I, you know what? I'm suddenly not hungry. Why don't we just skip the dinner? So, I don't know. Man, I had a long night. Where was, uh, what's the deal with the guy that uh, shot up all those people in Chicago? Was no, no, it? that was Den- it was actually right Denver. outside of Denver. That's it was right. a- Aurora, Denver. Aurora, Colorado. What's the deal is that he uh, went into a dark theater during, oh. during the middle of the Batman movie, and did the, which, of course, has a lot of smoke and shooting and noise. So when he set off a grenade, a lot of actually it was I, I believe a CS grenade. So that's what tear gas. Yeah, when that's he, what Schaefer Cox had. Terrorist. When, when he set that off, a lot of people thought it was either a prank or a joke or some kind of a PR move to be part of the the movie. And when he started shooting, very few people thought that it was actually a real gun until they started seeing people's heads explode. And that's when the panic ensued. And as he was running around, because, of course, nobody in the theater was armed except for the bad guy, um, he was basically able to shoot 71 people, 12 of whom are dead. I had a hard time figuring out what was going on with that because um, I listened to Glenn Beck and then Sean Hannity, and both those guys talked their whole shows about how the left was going to turn it into something political and about how the left was going to make it about the Tea Party, and the left was going to make it about um, conservatives, and the left was going to make it about gun rights, and the left was going to make it about the NRA, and the left was going to make it about all these issues, and how disgusting they were, because they were going to turn this thing into this political issue. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, within uh, an hour of it, or two hours of it happening, ABC News was already reporting that it was part of the Tea Party. Right, but I'm pretty sure that I listened to, how long is Glenn Beck? Three hours? And Sean Hannity's three hours? Yep. So same. I listened to six hours of two guys make it a political issue. <laughs> how didn't they? Well, that's because there's the right politics, oh, or the politics yeah. of the right. You know, and if you agree with them, then of course you're going to agree with the, that they're not being political. They're just uh, pointing out the obvious, you see, which is that the that the left is trying to seize our guns. Because the left owns the media. Except for their shows. (laughs) Because they're not media. No, they're, what are they? If they're not media. They're AM talk shows. It's totally different. Okay, completely different. 100% different thing. Uh, Would you like to go to the phones this morning? Sure. 458-TALK is the number. We'll see who's waiting for us here. Good morning. This is the wake-up call. Who's this? Hi, is that us? It might be. Who is this? Yeah, hey, hi, this is Bob. I'm listening to KFAR. Yes, go ahead. What's on your mind? Yeah, that interest, uh, that's pretty interesting on that opening introduction on the vote. Here in Alaska, that individual vote, I still don't understand 
why you guys vote, you know, because the vote is already counted uh, on the national level. And by the time you see what Alaska comes in, as far as the vote, they're not counted. They're not even uh, considered as far as your individual vote. There's no vote in Alaska. No, I don't it, know what the deal is on vote. That's that's not the issue. The issue is, is how you feel about it. The issue is your passion about not wanting Obama to win, so voting for Mitt Romney. And if you vote for anybody else, then you're throwing your vote away. Regardless of whether they get counted or not, you have to be part of the system. Well, that's kind of ridiculous. If you're going to, you know, put a dollar out there and you're not going to get anything in return, what are you putting your dollar out there for? For the privilege of participating. Same way with the vote. What are you voting for? What if you? What are you doing going into the uh, poll and putting your name on there and saying this is who you want for president, and then your vote isn't counted? That's the same way with putting a dollar down, thinking you're going to get something in return. You don't get anything in return. What's the deal? You know, I mean, give up on it. There's no vote in Alaska. Their vote does not count. Your individual vote does not count. Can you understand that? Yeah, but it's the privilege of being able to walk around and saying I voted for Obama. No, no, no. I was for saying hey, I you didn't kind of vote just for Obama. making oh, a sorry. silly kind of assumption over this. You know, that doesn't make any sense. If your vote doesn't count, what are you voting for? Obama. <laughs> I don't know why you're stuck on this Obama. You can't. You can't understand if your vote doesn't count. It doesn't count. No. Oh. Wait, wait. If it doesn't count, then what are we supposed to do? Be un-American and not if vote? Yeah, yeah. Well, what are you voting for? If your vote doesn't count, what are you voting for? I don't know. Why? Let's take that here to the local level. Why are we Why are we voting here if our vote doesn't count? You know what happened down in Anchorage back in April? You know, all those people, they came out for the local elections and they didn't have enough ballots. And so people who came out to vote couldn't vote because they couldn't get a ballot. And then, after all of that hullabaloo, they found 141 ballots that apparently had not been counted. In a box. In a box. Actually, in a bag. In a sealed bag. But it wouldn't have changed the vote. But, but that's what they say. They said, uh, it would say. It wouldn't have changed the vote anyway. Don't worry about it. The elections were fair and honest and everything was just fine. Yeah, well, that's just one point that I was trying to make. Uh, the other one is this Alaska really has changed since this uh, pipeline and the uh, permanent fund. And this brought some people up here. It used to be you could leave your door unlocked, take off if you had the medical, and then you'd come back. If somebody used your wood, man, your wood pile would still, you know, somebody would reimburse the wood and or the food. If somebody used your food, man, they'd come back and, you know. Are you, you sure? You didn't that... have to lock your door. And if you had to use the truck for something, they'd use the truck, yeah, and if they broke down, they'd. You know, do something to fix it, what, what, and or you hang, hang replace on, no. the gas. What, what but changed anymore there? Nowadays, anymore nowadays, with the kind of people here, and the uh, you know this uh, permanent fund, which is I consider it just a fuel rebate because it's higher priced fuel, heating fuel, gas, etc. That we how, have how to pay is it, for. How is it the top. kind of people and that then came then here and not the government the itself? Hang on now. Lower hang, hang on. They don't have hang to pay on. As much. Bob, so Aaron's trying. Hey, Bob, can you hear us? A rebate. Hello, can you can you hear us? Aaron was trying to ask um, you a question, Bob. Thank you very much. I was just going to expound on that. Okay, well, thanks for the call. Well, while we're expounding on how people are so rotten, which I generally don't like to agree with, how is it that uh, how many people were here in the pipeline days in the 1970s? Uh, honest, honestly, I don't know. I wasn't here then. The census I, of there's, I believe it's there's 75,000 people here. In the, you mean in the Fairbanks area? Yes. Okay. And how many is there now? 130,000? More people. Hardly. Hardly more people. In the 1970s, there's how many law enforcement? Oh, not not nearly enough to deal with three, all the Three, I believe. <laughs> I think there was Three. And now there's, what, 56? You're right, about actually on the police force in Fairbanks. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if those numbers are the... I think there's 50-something. Right. I feel safer, don't you? Well, our what crime, I, Our crime level is way down, My right? question is, what changed? I mean, we get, the government got 50 times bigger than it was. Regulation got 100 times more than it was. 
you went from being able to drive that pickup that he's talking about that you helped your buddy out with his wood or you'd stopped and helped out your buddy that was on the side you leave your truck on the side of the road now what happens you get a ticket for having a piece of junk on the side of the road or it just gets towed you want to go get some wood with your buddy you end up having to get how many uh regulations along the way you're limited on how much you can get you have to stack it store it and burn it a certain way you have to buy a certain kind of stove to burn it in what well, really changed in fairbanks the people our permanent fund drew in all these people for a thousand dollars a year when their cost of living is way exceeded that no, i i don't think so so what, what do you think changed government changed absolutely well uh, wait how did how did government change the government is uh, the government is the same we have the same government now that we had then the only i think the people did change i think the people accepted more regulations aaron sure a hundred thousand more regulations yeah, and they, they pulled they, over for texting pulled over for seat belt pulled over yeah i well, remember when i first moved to fairbanks if you didn't have insurance and you got in an accident then you were going to have to pay for it through restitution but you didn't get your – the state wasn't a third party in that. The state didn't take your vehicle. They didn't take your license. They didn't take you to jail. How many people are sitting in jail for a criminal misdemeanor for driving without insurance? But it wasn't the government overstepping. It was people petitioning the government and asking them to pass that law, just like they asked them to pass this this uh, texting law. People asked for it, Aaron. They asked for it. Keep us safe. Please pass a law. All right, but if you take a people and push them down to the very, very bottom, how are they going to treat each other? If a guy can't go out and start a business, if a guy can't just walk out his door and make stuff happen, what's he going to do? Your, your crime rate doesn't go up because people are worse. Your crime rate goes up because we're running out of options. Are you blaming crime on government? I don't know. The higher the poverty level in every country, the higher the crime rate, I thought, right? So are you saying that we need to have a war on poverty? That's sure. <laughs> Wait, haven't we had a war on poverty since the yes. 19th? how's that working out? <laughs> Look at how much foreign aid we've sent to uh, other countries. How did that work? Well, everybody's our friend now, right? Well, it made their governments twice as big, didn't it? <laughs> Wait, I'm Why not... are those people starving in the first place over there? Is it the same reason that we have poverty in our inner cities? Is the regulation in our inner cities 1,000 times worse than it is in our rural areas? Yeah. I think it is. You've got it on the Saturday morning wake-up call right here, a production of Far North Tactical over there at the corner of 8th and Lazy. If you'd like to participate, the phone number is 458-TALK. That's 458-8255. All right, welcome back to the Saturday morning wake-up call right here on KFAR. You can hear the music there in the background. That's uh, from the Robin Hood movie, not in Nottingham. Uh, Aaron Bennett, good morning, sir. Good morning. Go ahead. It sure seems like we... um Talent a lot on how rotten people are. And the funny thing about that is we sit here and view the people and we think to the, about people in our minds as the mass as being this less than good entity. And yet we take from that pool of people and throw them up in power above us. How does that make any sense? And we... We regulate more and more and more, and the more the government gets involved, the worse it gets, the worse people get, the more poverty we have, the less freedoms we have. There's never any point where we just step back and say, enough. We never decide that maybe the people aren't walking POSs. Maybe we've regulated them so far that there's nothing left There's no liberty, there's no freedom, there's nothing left to a man. Nothing left unto himself, that's for sure. You know, Nazi Germany made the claim that the only free man in Germany was when when a man was asleep. How is it any different from the moment you wake up in America? And we're living in Fairbanks that's supposedly a lot better than anywhere else. And I've lived other places, in a lot of ways Fairbanks is a lot better place. But from the moment I wake up, Every aspect of my life is regulated. Mm-hmm. 
every aspect of my life. And you're going to tell me that I'm supposed to be a nice guy? If you don't like it, why don't you go out and vote for change? Hope and change. <laughs> well, how's it going to change if you don't vote, Aaron? How is it going to change if I do vote, Steve? Honestly, how has it changed? The more we vote, the worse it gets. Well, at least at least if I voted for Ron Paul, at least then I would be voting my moral conscience. Just so that you can say I voted for the loser? No. Is that what you want? No. No, I don't really care if I tell anybody. In fact, if I was actually going to go to the poll and vote for anybody, I would vo- probably vote for Obama. The reason is, is because why not... Why not take the guy I already know, then take the guy that I don't know? You see, Obama is running the country, as far as the economy is concerned, no one will spend any money. No one will invest, because they know where he's going. We voted McCain, and everybody's going to loosen up their money, and we're going to buy ourselves... You mean mean Romney? Romney, sorry. Yeah, you know, pretty much you can take out that name and insert any other name, and the Republicans are running in the last 10 years, and it's the same. Um, how about the Republican <laughs> when they vote in him? If he gets in, people will loosen up their money, investments will rise, and we'll have a boom in our economy for what? Two years or so? And then it'll just come crashing down around a Republican at the hell. I mean there there is good motivation, I guess, to vote for a um, Republican. And so it crashes down with one at the helm. I mean, basically, all we're going to see, whoever we vote in is who we're going to have on the other side, in my opinion. If it goes down with a Democrat at the wheel, we're going to have a fascist government on the other side. If it goes down with a Republican at the wheel, we're going to have a communist government on the other side. I mean, that's what it's looking like it's coming down to, because Americans are so tired of their system not working for them. They're just about ready for anything else. And, and but this is a tactic we've seen through history. I mean, look how how did the Nazis come into power? They were voted in, but how they actually seized all of the aspects of government was after the Reichstag fire, right? Sure. Well, and what happened there? Well, terrorism. Right, and and the people clamored for protection. Hey, save us, save us from these violent people. Wait a second, it is the violent people who are saving us from themselves. Oh, wait a minute. How does that work? All of our lines are on hold, Aaron. Let me know when you want to go to the go phone. Go ahead. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to the Saturday morning wake-up call. Who's this? This is Charles the Poet. Charles, what's on your mind? I have the privilege of saying I voted for a man named Hinmatuya Latlech. That's Chief Joseph of the Nez Pierce. He knew what it was like to be sold out and run over. In 2012, and if I vote, I'll vote for Chief Seattle. Uh, the poem is, Where Have the Buffalo Gone? And in that he says, This is the end of living and the beginning of survival. Uh, my message is, Lose the American Dream. Lose the American Dream. Uh, reference material for today would be Miracle on Main Street by F. Tupper Saucy. And you can look those up on the Internet. Thank you for the call, Charles. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Who's this? Hello. Hey, who is this? Hey, yeah, this is Pat here in Delta. And uh, I agree with you totally um, on the national scale. We have uh, pretty much almost, seems like, lost it unless the Republican convention turns our way. However, uh Here at the local level, you know, there's a three-way race, and it's the first time we've had anybody that's Liberty candidate. You got three-way. You got Bishop, who was for the big unions. You got Seekins, who was an ex-senator who sponsored uh, pro-mandatory borough legislation for the unorganized borough, and who also voted for HB 81, which mandated all handymen to get licensed in the state of Alaska to do small jobs under 10,000 bucks, which are not small. Wait, he sponsored that? He didn't sponsor it. He voted for it. Okay, okay. But he did sponsor the mandatory borough incorporation uh, uh, um, with FCR, Senate Concurrent Resolution. So Seekins is definitely um, kind of a, a, a good Republican, you know. And and But you, 
however, you have David Eastman, who is, uh, was our District 6 chairman. I know him. He worked uh, fervently for Liberty. He was uh, Ron Paul, and he's rising up from nowhere. And, and uh, you know... So his, his, his agenda is to repeal as many laws as he possibly can? I would... I would for repealing uh, many laws, but I, I don't know specifically if he, if he is. So what... Uh, what laws do you think that he would be for keeping? Um, well, uh, you know, local, state-level laws, you mean? I don't care. Any regulatory law. Any law that makes me less free, which I put the challenge out on this show for what? And when I was going on Steve's show, it's been about two years now. I put the challenge out for anyone to call in and tell me what law that's ever been passed. Any law ever. Any law ever that has made us more free. You're absolutely right. Uh, okay, very so few. what you said that there's some laws that he would be for getting rid of. I'm only interested in a candidate that can view all law as oppressive to liberty. Yeah, um, you know, you definitely need to have David Eastman in, uh, on the show because he's the only one that stands for liberty. Of course, uh, that, that's, that's, that's what we always liberty. say. We always say that we need somebody on there to save us, to make us free to give us liberty i'm not saying he's not a good guy i'm not trying to knock you i just want you to step back and think about what you're advocating for a minute you want somebody else to make us more free it's not going to happen he cannot create liberty he cannot create freedom why did you support ron paul i didn't didn't you participate in the... Oh, wait, that, that wasn't you that participated in the Republican convention. That was Josh. That was Josh. And I don't, I don't... I'm not knocking him for doing it, but... Never at any point did I think Ron Paul could create liberty for me. I never thought that he could be that guy to save me and make me free. <laughs> right, I mean, if, if we're going to view Ron Paul in that manner, we may as well have Hitler. What is the difference? Well, what we got down here is we got kind of a motto that, you know, we need to send people that will fall on the sword for us. And and when we get to the point where citizens do stand up, go to Juno, fall on the sword for us, lose their career for a season, get blackballed down there in Juno and kind of chastised, and, and just and then they leave and we send another one down, you know, to oppose all the, the tyranny coming at us. That's what we need to start doing. And when we start realizing that, we will get somewhere. I, I, I have a... I have a way better idea. How about we elect somebody that stays home? How about we elect somebody that doesn't go there at all? Because well, the only way, the only way that anyone could promote liberty is to not show up and be a part of passing legislative paper laws on other people. It's not possible to promote liberty in any way, shape, or form if you are a part of a system that legislates law legislates anything into a law. Well, I mean, you're right. We need people to go to Juno. Fundamentally. We need people to, excuse me. We need people to stop unnecessary legislation. And that's wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You and I just agree that there is no necessary legislation. We both just agree that there is no legislation that's ever successfully made anybody more free. In fact, it's all been contrary to that. Okay, so how about sending a, a citizen army in sequence of people to go to Juno and oppose legislation. How about we all just stand up for the liberties right here for each other? Well, well we do. How about do both? How about we do both? Well, what would happen if instead of sending people down to Juno to try to oppose legislation, we opposed the law here by not complying? How about we just ignore the rap bastards? Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Thanks for the call, brother. Hey, sure, thank you. 458 Talk is a number. This is the wake-up call. Good morning. Who's this? You still there? It's Bill. Hey, Bill, go ahead. This is me? Yeah, it might be. It depends. Oh, okay. It's Bill. Go ahead, Bill. Hey, um, how about, okay, what I was thinking about is back then when the pipeline was going on, we had liars, pokers, dice going at the bars, and the, uh, the minimum pot was $20,000 in the pot for liar's poker. And back then, everybody was had pockets full of money. And we were all happy, and we didn't care about government because we were sitting on our wallets that, that were hurting bad. Oh and 
if if I, if if we just had the pipeline come through and made me more money to make me the millionaire to make me more happy, believe me, I wouldn't care what the government does. Okay, because I could then I could buy my way out of the government. You know, I'd have enough money that I could uh, I could you know. Uh, I could go buy an island, you know. So if I had enough money that made me to where I didn't care about the government, uh, that, that's worth that, brother. Why? You know? Why do you have to have enough money to not care about the government? Well, what? what say it again. Why do you have to have a set amount of money to not care about the government? Because then I can afford to pay whatever fine they wanted to fine me. You know, then I just like, hey, yeah. here, take it, go, just make my roads better, you know. And then the other thing is if anything happens and you don't have a government, what's going to happen whenever anything happens in the Middle East? You don't think Russia's sitting over there chomping at the bit, hoping that that's going to happen, so you're going to be, a, your new dictator will be Gorbachev? So wait, 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 wait a second, when's the last time, when's the last time the Russians invaded anybody? They haven't. They haven't. But they might. No, so we need government to protect not. us because they might? They learned from America. Hey, brother, they have learned a lot from America. Let me tell you, right now... Yeah, they learned not to be like America and try and be an expansionist into places like Afghanistan or into places like Georgia because we'll step in and kick their lily asses. No, we won't. We no, won't? No, we we won't. did. No, sir, we cannot do it now. No, sir, we cannot. Really? We How cannot. long ago was Georgia? The the, the uh, you mean the the breakaway republic of Georgia when uh, that what was it two years right ago? Right now you think we can? Three? We're, How we're long? Lucky to be over where we're at right now. I wish Georgia would break away. <laughs> no, not the state of Georgia. You're talking about the. Republic. And anyway, what the my next president? Are you talking I'm about hoping, the state? <laughs> I'm hoping the next president. I'd will have give to move to Georgia. The pipeline. You you want the you want the next president to do what to the pipeline? Give it away? Give me. No, build the Keystone Pipeline so I can go back to work and make uh, uh, money, you know? Put me to work. I don't have a president yet out there that says he'll put me to work. Which Wait, wow. What, whoa, whoa, hang on a second. Hang on a, what part of the Constitution says that it's the government's job to put you to work, brother? Actually, Mitt Romney's promising everybody's going to put him to work. Then that's who I'm voting for. All right. If he, if he puts me to work, then that's who I'm voting for. All right. Thank- I, mean, I haven't heard it from Obama. Obama hasn't told me one minute that he's going to uh, put me to work. He's saying that he's going to take more out of my pocket. So uh, I'd rather have uh, Mitt Romney in there who says. That <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, the, the, thanks for the call. Josh's head just exploded here. Aaron, you want to help me clean this up? It's you, a, that's a mess, man. You have a squeegee. Of brain and uh, all kinds of skull frag- fragments around here. Wow, look, it's just a lot of tissue in well, the brain. Yeah. <laughs> well, he must have been. Wait, I thought he, was educa- he wasn't educated in the public schools. I thought he actually, That's why there's no brain in it. Oh, that makes sense. All right, where do we go we from really here? We're really think- I'm. I mean, that was just amazing. We're, 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 we want to vote for a president so we can go to work. Right, because apparently so it is the government's the job government. to give us a job. Wow. Well, sure it is. Well, that's all you've been hearing. I mean, think about it. All the way back to Ronald Stinkin Reagan, who everybody heralds as this bastion of conservative thought. Oh, he was. Hmm. I mean, everything that he did, it was all about the let's get um, the, let's get the economy moving, let's put America back to work, right? I I was I was a boy, but I remember, I remember the fuel lines under Jimmy Carter, and I remember the 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 elation from my parents when Reagan won and started putting America back to work. Yeah, but Reagan kind of did put America back to work. That's a different. I think he cut regulation. He cut oh, taxes. To actually have someone, well, actually taxes eventually went up. To really, but he he grew government. Josh is what he did. Yeah, a lot. He Two, created new departments. Two hundred years ago, no one gave a crud about who the president was. You didn't think when you were going about your daily life, you did not think about who the president was. You didn't go, oh my gosh, I hope the president is so and so, so I can get back to work. How pathetic. 
Are we? I mean, this goes back to what uh, Dave has said back in the day when he used to come on here. Get off your knees. Have a little bit of... Have, have something. Get off your knees, folks. I mean, you're begging and crying and wishing for a president so you can go back to work. We're right. begging Com- and crying. In, coming into my store and literally shaking. You're so angry because I might vote for Ron Paul, so you consider that a vote for Obama. To even worry so much at all who the president is. I mean, it's just... Yeah, but Josh, that president we got right now is selling us down the river, you know? He's yeah. He flushing is. America down the toilet. Wait, 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 whoa, whoa. how did he do any of that? Everything that's happened, the people are blaming Obama for, the the Congress did. Yeah, executive orders, Steve. Yeah, all those executive orders that are in effect. That wait, are wait, not... How many executive orders did Bush do? How many executive orders did Clinton do? All of them. It's just pathetic. We are Americans, right? Get off your knees. Have some self-respect. Get off your knees. That's what it all comes down to. We're we're worried about one man. You know, earlier I was listening to the show while I was driving over here late, and you were saying how we, the general idea is that everyone's bad, you know, ultimately everyone's evil, this and that. And so... Collectively, we're even more evil, so we need someone to rule over us, so we pick people out of this pool of evil people to <laughs> rule over us. How does that make any sense? It doesn't make any sense. It, well, it's we're like, pathetic. It's like last week when I had to call in because I was um, working, and that gentleman called in and said, well, if every, you know, you guys were talking about if everything fell apart here uh, nationwide, what would happen locally? And you had a... A gentleman call who's a good guy. He's called lots of times, but the first thing that he said was, "Well, we're gonna, you know, if everything happens, we're gonna have to have some elections and vote in a leader." Right. Like that. That all that does is just ha- start us back down the same week? path. Yeah, I think yeah, it was. That was last yeah. week. We just starts us down the same path that, that that we're on right now. If we if we're gonna be submitting why, ourselves why, to somebody else. Why, if everything fell apart and we're all just standing around? Would we vote in a leader? What exactly would that leader do? What would he immediately have to do? He would have to have some kind of use of force. Compel us to comply. To compel us to comply. He he have to have some kind of force. I'm just sick of this show. <laughs> well, why don't we go to the phones and take another call? Well, I'm just thinking, the guys that stood at the bridge at Lexington were not saying, no, we shall not comply, so they can put someone else in to bend their knee to. Right, We're they, Americans. They weren't fighting King George to put in King Oliver. There were some, though, who wanted to put in another King George. They well, wanted to make right, that's, George that's Washington. Neither, that's, we're talking the, about the, the men on brokers. the Lexington Green. They weren't there trying to put in their guy. The Patriots lament. The guys that were fighting the war. The guys that were the farmer that didn't have shoes. They were not fighting to have a king put over them. They were not fighting so they could vote for the next president so he could give them a job. Get off your knees, quit being serfs, have some self-respect, and don't care about who's president. Be a man. (laughs) You ready to go to the phones? Yeah. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Al. Al, go ahead. Well, there's so many things to take off on. But first of all, uh, you know, to, to uh, uh, take a page from our rural community people is, uh, you know, peaceful c- c- civil disobedience, you know, starts the ball rolling. And, you know, it's going on with this King Salmon issue. You know, they want to feed their families. The law says there's not enough fish in a river you can't fish. And so what do they do? They're fishing They're anyway. They're fishing anyway. That's what I'm talking about, Al. Can you answer a funny question? I was actually I was buying a stupid king salmon stamp last night so I could go fishing in a river that they won't let me keep a salmon in. And the guy actually behind the counter said, I don't understand why we have to buy a stamp when they're not even letting us <clears throat> excuse me, letting us keep the king. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Because no it's not. It's about compliance. It has nothing to do with the meat value of the fish. No. I don't know, what has it ever been about that? If that was the case, then when you went deer hunting or moose hunting or anything like that, you would go get your pay for your tag after you harvested. Yep. 
Because otherwise you're playing the state lottery, aren't you? Well, it has none of that has anything to do with anything. It's a permit, so it has to do with authority over you. Exactly. Right. <clears throat> but you know, you're getting permission from the king to go out and hunt for his yeah. game on his land. Yeah. No, but I didn't want to go down that rabbit trail. But you know, and you know, ta- you brought it back to our founding fathers again, and you know, replacing a king with a king. But we didn't replace a king with a king. We replaced a king with a judge. You guys are confusing me. You're talking about kings and king salmon and yeah. kings. What kind of kings are we talking about? I'm lost. We're going to lost. replace the king with a chum. How about that? <laughs> have, they been, uh, have they been arresting anyone that's fishing? Yeah, they've been arresting people, confiscating. You know, I've, I've read up to 1,800 pounds of fish, destroyed piles of nets. But, you know, they'll just get some more and, you know, continue on. And basically those guys are, we're talking sub- rural subsistence folks, right? Subsistence. That means that that is their livelihood, that they can't go to the supermarket and get something else. There's nothing else for them to get. Well, you know, you can argue that, too. There's plenty of plain loads of food going into most villages. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, no different. I can live a subsistence live style and live in an urban area. No, it's you know, it's not saying I can go afford to go buy food at cars. Right. You know, that's not the... But, you know, back to my other point is, is we didn't replace a king with a king. We replaced a king with judges originally because we went back to a common law, didn't we? Right. For a short yeah. Yeah. Right. That didn't last well, very yeah, long. We evolved into what we have today. Right. No, the whole point was not to have a king, that's for sure. Yeah. The point was not to have. So is there any, any law that you would have on the books? There shouldn't be. Then, you, what, are, then you, what are the judges judging? See, that, well, that, that's the mistake that the... Common law. That, and how's common law made up of? What's common? What's common to man? Isn't it based off of case law and precedents? No. Developed uh, by well, judges yeah. through decisions and similar to tribunals? Yeah, but they weren't necessarily written down as law, I don't think. Well, it, once a, 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 a first-time court thing game where, you know, two people had a disagreement and a judge made a, made a decision, he made a precedence for everybody else. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that was how the common law came about over exactly. time. Right. I, don't, I just uh, don't think it was necessarily written down as law. I mean, basically, it was, doesn't it come down to doing everything that you say you're going to do and don't take, don't take somebody else's well, property and don't take their life? It comes down to a precedent set by a judge and who appoints or elects a judge. Right, but common law had the um, unilaterally become accepted by all religions. That was the That's why... That's what sets common law apart. It's not necessarily that a judge decided that's what law was. They had to a bit. They had to um, meet certain criteria, and one of the criteria is that it could reach, it could bridge the gap across every religion. Because most of your uh, quote unquote judges were uh, people, Clergy. right? Exactly. Either you know Catholics or um, it was societal customs, right? But what they found was is that all customs, all religions, all people could agree on certain laws that they called common. Because they were common everywhere you go. They're common. It's a pretty self-explanatory word. That's why you can't get beyond more than about 10 or 20 before you're, you're past right. so commonality. If a, if a judge was to hand down something that was outside of what was common, then it wouldn't hold any precedence, would it? Not the way I've been reading about common law. The judge's ruling was the final decision. Right, but what I'm saying is, is the judge pulled back a, down to civil d- disobedience again if if everybody didn't agree what the judge said. Uh, but a judge could totally go outside of what was common and make a ruling, and that wouldn't make it into law because it would be outside of what was common. But right. it'd be a precedent. So who else is going to overturn it? Another judge? The, that, that, isn't that what jury nullification is about, though? I mean, if they, if it, if it gets brought up and people are like, no, we don't agree. This man can go free. He didn't break any law. Yeah, that's part of it. But that's during the trial or during the hearing. But that, then that requires people not comply then with that, a bad law. And again, peaceful civil disobedience. I'm all for it. Uh, I'm with you. Al, you gonna get, you going to go fishing? Am I going to go fishing? Yeah. I fish by right. You fish by right. By right. It's my right. Okay. Yeah, I go fishing. All right. 
Have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. The problem today, though, is if you try civil disobedience, if you try anything, you may go to jail for the rest of your life for preparing to kill space Martians that don't exist. Well, that's, or, that's only if you're crazy. Or hit squads from Colorado that don't exist. Well, you do civil civil disobedience today. Basically, you don't pay your parking ticket. They claim the right to kill you for that. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> You're obviously a threat to the fabric of society by not paying your parking ticket. No, they, they claim ownership over your life. So. All right, you've got it on KFAR. We are coming up on the Fox News right now. At the other side, it'll be time for Patriots Lament on the local talk radio. <laughs> All right, welcome to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. It's Local Talk Radio. I am Steve Floyd, the monkey behind the machine. Joining me in the studio, the actual hosts of the show. We've got Josh Bennett from Bighorn Enterprises. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. And from Far North Tactical, we have Aaron Bennett. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Steve. All right, it's a nice rainy day out there. Lots of liquid sunshine for all the folks that are watching the parade go by outside. The uh, parade? Yeah, there's a parade. We heard a little bit of it in the uh, the last hour where the the sirens went by with the uh, the firefighters. Uh, it's always fun to have the Golden Days Parade out there. People come out and, regardless of the weather, I don't think it's as big a crowd though. No. Uh, as it is when it's I, I know last year was a pretty good crowd. And you guys actually had a float last year with the yeah. Ron, with your Ron Paul stuff. It was bomb. It was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So, where do we go from here, gentlemen? I want to read something from I don't know the guy's first name. He's an old dude. It's spelled E T I E N N E. I'm sure some of the Etienne. Smarter... Etienne mm-hmm. de la Boite. Mm-hmm. Etienne de la Boite, night in 1552. I think this uh, is fascinating. Here's a small excerpt from it. And I actually have it posted on our website. If you would care to actually do something worthwhile, this would be something good to read. And the web address is? PatriotsLament.blogspot.com. So here's a little bit of it. Again, this was written in 1552. I do not know how it happens that nature fails to place within the hearts of men a burning desire for liberty, a blessing so great and so desirable that when it is lost, all evils follow thereafter, and even the blessings that remain lose taste and savor because of their corruption by servitude. Liberty is the only joy upon which men do not seem to insist, for surely if they really wanted it, they would receive it. Apparently they refuse this wonderful privilege because it's so easily required. Poor, wretched, and stupid peoples, nations determined on your own misfortune and blind to your own good, you let yourselves be deprived before your very eyes of the best part of your revenues. Your fields are plundered, your homes are robbed, your family heirlooms taken away. You live in such a way that you cannot claim a single thing as your own. It would seem that you consider yourselves lucky to be loaned your own property, your families, and your very lives. All this havoc, this misfortune, this ruin, descends upon you, not from alien foes, but from the one enemy whom you you yourself render as powerful as he is, for whom you go bravely to war, for whose greatness you do not refuse to offer your own bodies unto death. He who thus domineers over you has only two eyes, only two hands, only one body, no more than is possessed by the least man among the infinite numbers dwelling in your cities. He has indeed nothing more than the power that you confer upon him to destroy you. Where has he, re- where has he acquired enough eyes to spy on you if you do not provide them yourselves? How can, he be, how can he have so many arms to beat you with if he does not borrow them from you? The feet that trample down your cities, where does he get them if they are not your own? How does he have any power over you except through you? How would he dare sell you if you had no if he had no cooperation from you? What could he do to you if you, if you yourselves did not connive with the thief who plunders you? If you had not accomplices, if you were not accomplices of the murderers who kill you, if you were not traitors to yourselves, you sow your crops in order that he may ravage them. You instill and furnish your homes to give him goods to pillage. You rear your daughters that he may gratify his lust. You bring up your children in order that he may confer upon them the greatest privilege that he knows, to be led into his battles, to be delivered to butchery, to be made the servants of his greed and the instruments of his vengeance. You yield your bodies unto hard labor in order that he may indulge in his delights and wallow, wallow in his filthy pleasures. You weaken yourselves in order to make him stronger and the mightier to hold you in check. 
From all these indignities, oops, sorry. From all these indignities, such as the very beasts of the field would not endure. From all these indignities, such as the very beasts of the field would not endure, you can deliver yourself if you try, not by taking action, but by merely by willing to be free. Resolve to serve no more. You are not. You are at once freed. I do not ask that you place hands upon the tyrant to topple him over, but simply that you support him no longer. Then you will behold him like a great colossus whose pedestal has been pulled away, and he falls on his own weight and breaks into pieces. What, right. year, what year was that? 1552. Mm-hmm. Etienne de la Boite. I'm assuming that's how you say it. So what you're trying to say is it's impossible for any oppression to come on us that we don't do ourselves. Mm-hmm. He basically, in 1552, laid it out. It's all about obedience. So you're saying he said that before the Gestapo started terrorizing people in Germany? Mm-hmm. And he said that before... Yeah, but the Gestapo wasn't <laughs> Germans. He said yeah, it they, before... Yeah, they were. This was oh, written sorry. before <laughs> the revolution, before any of that. Hmm. This hmm. is probably why one of the reasons we had a revolution. Basically, he is saying, refuse consent. The only re- power that these people, you know, they only have two eyes. Obama and Ron, Obama only has two eyes, two arms, and two legs. What? And the only power he has is the power that we let him have. So The it power is. that we give him. And I think it's ironic there's millions of you in your cities, and this one pot little dictator runs all of you? So what you're saying is we should vote for Romney? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who only has two eyes, two arms, and two legs, and we do the same thing. We get all this, we, everything we would do, everything that you would do in your daily life would be so he could plunder it. And it's one guy. Or if you take up all of... Uh, Government, it's only a small amount compared to the millions of people that live in this country. Refuse consent. At the very end of uh, of his uh, read, The Politics of Obedience, he writes, Let us therefore learn while there is yet time. Let us learn to do good. Let's raise our eyes to heaven for the sake of our honor, for the very love of virtue, or to speak wisely, for the love and praise of God Almighty, who is the infallible witness to, of our deeds and the ju- just judge of our faults. As for me, I truly believe I am right. Since there is nothing so contrary to a generous and loving God as tyranny, I believe he has reserved in a, se- in a separate spot in hell some very special punishment for tyrants and their accomplices. Which is interesting because in the earlier part that I read, he basically is saying that we are the accomplices. There's nothing that they can do without our permission there's nothing that they can force on us without us giving them the force no no, no. i don't know any push. i don't know anybody who goes and just submits to the tsa i don't know anybody who just voluntarily pulls over when a policeman flashes their lights i don't know a single person who voluntarily gives up his freedoms so that we might be secure oh, uh, wait, yeah wait yeah that's actually, all of us. no yeah. that's me yeah we all do that's all of us and it's really interesting if you just simply, there's no, not a shot fired, no civil war, no revolution that everyone, well, not everyone, but a lot of people, gun owners of America, guys, you know, we want, uh, we're going to fight for our freedoms. Yeah, right. We haven't yet. And all we have to simply do, we don't need to fire a shot. No one needs to die. We just simply say, no more. They have to make it easy for us, Josh, and come get our guns. <laughs> Don't you know anything? Anyways, I wanted to put that thing out there. Because we've talked about this in the past, and this is the first time, this last week is the first time I've actually read this, that he, this thing that he wrote. It's all about compliance. We are 300 million strong, and they have how many people? And yet we live in servitude. Everything that we do, we give... 40, 50, 60, 70 percent of our wealth is taken from us. We submit every single day to the TSA so they can do things that we don't like. I mean, everyone complains about that. How many that. states are they actually setting up roadblocks in? There's going to be quite a few more this year. Is there? Yeah. 
Yeah, the, the Congress they're gave They're taking them, over the trains, too, aren't they? Republican yeah, Congress gave them an extra however many millions, 200 million or 20-some million, to set up more roadblocks this year so they can do roadside. The Republicans did not. Yes, they did. The Republican Congress That's gave them more money. That's why we got good ones in, Josh. <laughs> That's why we those, need to... Those are the good ones. I mean, the Republicans seem to be proud of the fact that they created the Patriot Act. Oh. They are proud of it. Voting is not going to work because we already have the good ones in there. The Tea Party guys are already in power. There's quite a few of them anyways. And then people go, well, they don't have the ultimate power because they're getting pushed down. They'll always be pushed down because they comply. And until the only option that we have, the only choice that we have to be free is to live free and it, refuse consent. In a, in a sense, isn't participation in the political process part of the consent as well by going and saying, I'm going to vote for who's going to make my law? Yeah, you are consenting by, you're basically, you're like going, it's like going to Vegas. You're gambling. But... You are compliant. You're giving consent with whatever the outcome is because you are participating in the game. You're flipping the coin. I might win. I might lose. But by participating, you're saying that you will comply with whatever side happens to come out on top. But if you don't vote, you don't have a right to complain. <laughs> if you I don't it, I vote. I think it's more like a, a water buffalo trying to decide if it wants to be eaten by a lion or an alligator, and it doesn't really like to be drowned before it dies, so it's definitely going to go with the lion. A, a vote for the cheetahs, a vote for the alligators. Good point. I think if you don't vote, you're the only one that can complain because you've you've refused your consent. If you vote, you don't have a right to complain because you said, I am willing to participate I'm willing for whatever coin wins this toss, or whichever mm-hmm. side the coin comes up, I'm willing to go with that. Just like going to Vegas. When you go in there, you agree. If I lose, I'm not going to start shooting people up. I'm going to accept my loss and go out. But when you lose in Vegas, you don't go out and start beating up people that didn't go and play in Vegas and blame them, do you? You don't go into Vegas and say, I'm going to gamble my life here. And then when you lose, you go out and you find someone and say, hey, were you gambling today? No, I don't gamble. Bang, 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 bang. Beat them up and say, it's your fault that we're in this situation and I lost. It's your fault. No, it's not his fault. If you had come in and gambled with me, I, sh- I-, I would have won. Exactly. It's the exact same thing as voting. You're gambling. So don't blame the people that don't want to gamble. It's not their fault. It's your fault. If none of you would go gamble, they would disappear. If you refused your consent, they would disappear immediately. I mean, once you stop giving them your compliance, they're done. If none of us paid our income tax, they're done. They might get mad and go, hey, we're going to throw you in jail. Go for it. You got 300 million people to throw in jail. Have at it. Well, who are they going to tax to build more jails? (laughs) That's a problem. Anyway, I'm going on and on, but the point is, actual real power is yours, and that power is to do nothing, to say, no, I refuse consent, I'm done. Don't blame me, I didn't vote. You want to go to the phone? Sure. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Yes. All right, we managed to clear all of the lines. In one it's song. pretty funny that uh, Steve and I opened up the first hour there with uh, talking about how a vote for anything other than Mitt Romney is a vote for Obama, right? So everything gets twisted into that. So if you don't vote at all, that's a vote for Obama. If you vote for Ron Paul, that's a vote for Obama. If you do anything but vote for Mitt Romney, that's a vote for Obama. I wonder if a vote for Obama is a vote for Obama. No. No. I wonder if a vote for Mitt Romney is a vote for Obama. No, no, that's the only one that counts. You're making my head hurt. I mean, all of the lines just filled back up. Go ahead. Four, five, eight, dog is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Randy. Good morning, Randy. What's on your mind? <laughs> well, I just wanted to say uh, regarding what Aaron Bennett said about possibly voting for Ron Paul, I did exactly that myself in 1988, on November 8th, 1988, 
during the election. I voted for Ron Paul Libertarian rather than George Bush the first, who was running against Michael Dukakis at the time. And the reason I did that is back then I was real strong with the Libertarian Party, and uh, uh, and I was also confident that I wasn't hurting anything because I felt confident at the time that that the three electoral votes from Alaska would go to George Bush, but I did want that tally to kind of help the Libertarian Party to kind of keep them on the ballot and such. Also during that election, according to my records that I'm reading here, uh, I voted for Urban Rahoy, which was an election that showed that every single vote counted in that time because he was running against this real liberal guy named Mark Boyer for Alaska State House, and it looked like Urban Rahoy almost won that election, but he kind of fell short. Fell short, and also just wanted to comment about uh, the guy that called uh, on a whole different show about an hour ago, uh, saying that Alaska's vote doesn't count. Well, just to inform him, Alaska decided the presidential election in the year 2000. Uh, as you recall, that was between uh, uh, Gore and Bush the second. I thought it was Florida. Well, it was actually every every state, but being in Alaska, and I I like to trumpet for Alaska. I thought it, it was the Supreme Court. Well, oh, if, snap. If, Alaska, if Alaska had voted for Gore, Gore would have won. But Alaska voted for Bush, Bush won. I wonder and, if we would have not had uh, Iraq and Afghanistan wars if Gore would have won. I don't know. And we would have had like $4 trillion extra dollars in the bank. No, he would have found a different way to go into the hole, probably for... Uh, I wonder if we would have had the Patriot Act. I don't, I don't know. Randy, would, you, would we have had a Patriot Act if uh, Gore had won? Well, I, I'm sure that the two, 2011, uh, I mean, the 9-11 terrorist attack would have happened anyway, whether Gore won or Bush won, and how Gore would have responded to that, I don't know. Maybe he would have rolled over and wetted on himself or gone to war. I don't know what he would have done. But Oh, yeah, because the, no, we would have got it anyways, because the House and the Senate were Republican-controlled. So we oh. still would have got a Patriot Act. Yeah, I see. Oh, that's, that's true. Yeah, I don't know appreciate, your, that's appreciate your call, Randy. All right, uh, you guys ready to go on to another call, or do you want to say something else? I just... I, <laughs> I want to know, uh, so this local election that he's talking about where it came down to the wire on the votes there and we got in a good Republican rather than the uh, flaming liberal, uh, what what happened? Uh, I think we, didn't, didn't we avoid going into uh, using our permanent, fund? wait, well, well, wait, no, everything that, that has happened. Everything got deregulated and we started, uh, no. we have natural gas. No, no. Um, no. In fact, I, I, if I remember correctly, uh, we were beginning to operate at a deficit. Somebody just texted me and said it's ironic how people call in here and talk about the golden days when the money flowed, kind of at the same time when there was very little government here. Oh. But it's not that, Josh. It's the people that moved here. No, I'm pretty sure it's the government that moved in and oh, took over. Oh, and well. Well, yeah. I thought, I thought it was there. more like what you just read there, that uh, fellow ATN, uh, who's what's it, who, who mentioned that the government can't do anything without the consent of the people, and it, if we are oppressed, it is because we are oppressing ourselves. Yes. Well, that oh. that just went full circle for me. I think I just heard a pop, but my head came out of my butt. <laughs> <laughs> Poor, <laughs> wretched, and stupid peoples. All right, you ready to take another call? We're going to vote another wretched, stupid person in Let me office. get my uh, in-flight puke bag before we do. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah, all right check under your seat. 458 Dog is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? It's Trill. Trill, what's on your mind? Do everybody that's down at the radio station get a PFP check? I, I didn't get one this year, no. I did refuse to file. Okay. <clears throat> now, you claim, you claim to be a resident, right? You have to be a resident to register to vote. You get a hunting and fishing license. Uh, a <clears throat> trapper's license. You can look up Webster's Collegiate Dictionary and see what the word resident means. It means chattel property. So wait, you, wait, know wait. What, you know what chattel property is, right? Yeah, absolutely. This property is owned by somebody. Trio, are you saying that if we use the right word, that makes us free? Well, uh, <laughs> if you quit claiming to be a resident, if you... If you do a write a letter to the editor and disavow that you're a resident. You're not a non-resident. You're not a resident. And how did that you work out for consent. Schaefer, Cox, and all those guys, though? Because they all claim that they weren't citizens anymore. Well, and the FBI has actually dubbed that brand and that group of people as the number one terrorist in America right now. Would be sovereignty the they, sovereignty they movement. They claim that they were a sovereign citizen, and that's oxymoron because there is no such thing. No, that's a good point. How can you be sovereign and a citizen at the same time? You can't be. 
Right, but being a non-resident alien doesn't make you anything either. You write, go ahead and write to the paper. It, ma- it makes you a resident. Being a non-resident alien makes you a resident. It doesn't effectually. The word they're not. It doesn't effectually step you outside of regulatory law. You write whatever you want to the newspaper and go out and go hunting and kill something. And when the fish and game comes up and asks you for your license, they don't give a crud what you wrote to the newspaper. That's they're true. Gonna, they're going to kill you anyways. If you killed a something, a moose, a caribou, that means you're armed to protect yourself. And whether or not you protect yourself is up to you. But ultimately you die. You protect well, yourself there, you're and then you're going to die. die anyway sometime or the other. Oh, that's a good point. All right, thanks for the call. 458-DOC is you the number. You can die standing up or on your knees, I guess. Uh, or, or lying in your bed peacefully being fed by the government. Red Some pillar, of those are pillar. more comfortable than others. <laughs> Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning. Who's this? That is Good profound. Morning. Hey Winston. Winston, what's on your mind? Uh, the, 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 all this. Uh, 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 until you can get, uh, uh, as, as long as the people that, that 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 carry the guns think that they have more guns than you do, uh, 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 they're going to step on you. Oh, they're going to de- defeat you by detail. Uh, 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 it just uh, uh, you cannot vote. Uh, 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 you can refuse to accept uh, anything you want to. Uh, but the bastards will set fire to your house and shoot you as you run out. Uh, 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 they're going to. Uh, I mean, that's the thing about power. Uh, you know, I, you make a good point, Winston. I mean, this this does come down to the monopolized use of force, doesn't it? I mean, who of us well, has a is. tank at home? Do you have a tank at uh, home? Unfortunately, no. I would, I would like, like to buy to one. one. I would like to have one, too. I would like to have an, interna- an intercontinental ballistic missile. I'd See like who to have steps an on Apache my helicopter then. loaded down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you, I just want to have some anti-aircraft. That way I can shoot down Josh's Apache. <laughs> oh, you scum. All right. Well, Winston, you, you, you're right. They have the monopolized use of force. They have more guns than we do. I mean, basically, they don't if you count them per person, per gun, per household. The problem is well, they're they willing to the use tanks. theirs. Yeah, they're willing to use their weapons to kill you. Right. And I really don't see a, a need to take your guns and go kill them. That's pretty pointless. When all we have to do is refuse to give them our consent anymore. I mean, obviously, if I go out by myself and refuse to give them consent, they'll come kill me. But if enough of us do, it's over. They're done. But here's the thing about it is it's, it's, it's a self-defeating strategy. Because uh, uh, when you get enough people that are going to, uh, uh, they, they organize to say that okay, we're not going to give them the consent, and then what you do is 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 is, is, is when you uh, uh, refuse to give them consent, then you're given a uh, 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 being as you can't stand up there every day and 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 uh, refuse to give you consent. Uh, 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 you organize, and then you become a power structure, and then the power structure takes over, and it 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 it, it steps on you. <laughs> that's um, a good point. It goes yeah. on, it's, it's been going on since the that, beginning of time. That's, that's a, the point that I always oh, make. Oh, that, yeah. I love that. We're all we're all in agreement here. There must be some, some kind of a strange uh, alignment out there going on. Wait, thanks for the call. We'll be right back with more Patriots Lament after the Fox News at the bottom of the hour. All right, welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. It's local talk radio, but we are streaming live online at KFAR660.com where we also happen to have all of our archived shows posted for you to listen to uh, at your convenience. Yeah. Then, all right, be, before the break, we were talking about uh, the idea of if we all if we all do not comply, then we end up, in, in effect, forming our own power structure, and we end up forcing our will on other people. Doesn't that... Isn't that contingent upon organization? I mean, in order for us to become a power structure, don't we have to want the power? Uh, yeah, I mean, and yeah, everybody that that is involved in the political process, whether they're running for borough office, like you guys have done, or yes. whether <laughs> whether you go off and you, um, whether it's at any, any level of running for office, or, or whether it's doing something like Schaefer Cox did and just declare himself the lord of that little group of men and start issuing orders. 
isn't it really the same deal that you are in effect saying no i want to be in charge of other people yes it is so do you want to be in charge of other people john no. i do aaron does <laughs> aaron definitely does i do not i just want to be left alone that's it the only reason i come on here yeah but josh you got We've, this business and you have employees and you're in charge of them they're free to go <laughs> Wait, no. Did you just fire your entire force today? <laughs> no, they're free to go at any point. Which is the difference between um, our interaction in the private sector versus the interaction you have with your government. My employees are free to go as they please. If they don't like it, they can boogie. I might not like that, but they're free to go. You hear that, though, about our country all the time. If you don't like it, why don't you leave? You're not necessarily free to go. Even when you leave, they claim ownership over you, and they still mm-hmm. tax you, and they do this, and they do that. Or if you leave, they might say, well, you can't come back now because we're mad that you left. So, yeah, you're not free to go. You're not free to not comply. You're not free, period. The greatest land on earth, the freest land in the world, you're not free. But... Whatever. I guess we know that. We beat that Is up. Is there some other country that's freer or something? No. I Okay, what does it matter if there's another country that's freer? I mean, the the whole point is that if you go to another country, aren't you still submitting yourself to whatever that other country says? Yeah, but I think if you go to another country that has little government because they don't have enough money to run around and build a, uh, what's that, uh, NSA building, basically, that they're building so they can... Keep track of every single every, stinking thing that we every do. Every conversation around Every world. conversation, every email, every web search, everything. Governments that can't do that might be a little better. They might have this tyrannical beast of a leader or whatever, but if he doesn't have the power to come knocking on your door every single night, then it might be a little bit easier to live there. All right, that Richard Mayberry, when he was on here a couple of weeks ago, was saying that one of the reasons he didn't want to leave to another country is because other countries are so poor. And we posed the question to him, wouldn't that be the reason to go to him? I think it is. And he took a pause on that and thought about it. He's coming back in October. Yeah, I want, I want to put that question to him a little bit more serious and make him answer it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, the problem with this government is it's so huge, which is also a good thing. Because mm. <laughs> it will collapse because it's so huge. It's so huge. Nothing you can do. You can't get away from anything. They're going to fly drones around to watch you. Come on. We're free. We're not free. We're allowed to do just enough to make us keep doing that so we can pay our taxes. That's all it comes down to. We're like free-range chickens. Right. We're still on the ranch. You're still on the ranch, and you're going to give your eggs. Or your neck. Quit laying, and now you're a roaster. (laughs) That's right. Uh, look at what I mean. Historically speaking, look at what happened to Rome. When Rome fell, was it because of was it because the Huns invaded? No. No. Why did Rome fall? I don't know, but I just saw somebody let. Well, I can't see anyone. I just saw some balloons go up in the air. I hope they don't get arrested for that. Oh, they're littering. Absolutely. They're polluting. Uh, there were two little kids. Well, may, may I? I <laughs> that right. doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. Take their parents to jail. How come when? You have a Rabbit parade, <laughs> you can litter, but any other time, just say you're walking down the street by the police station, you let go of a bunch of balloons. Because they have a permit to be in the parade. The They've litter? got permission. Those little kids didn't have For permission. all of the activities that go along with the parade, they have permission. Oh. Okay. What what happened, going back to the Rome issue, what happened with Rome is that they began to devalue their currency. They actually literally shaved off bits of their coin, and then they began to melt it down and add other metals to their silver and their gold so that they were not trading in, in real currency anymore. So they devalued their currency and eventually they got so that they couldn't sustain their growth and they collapsed under the weight of a monetary crisis. They got too big. You can't rule the world. Hello, America. You cannot rule the world. Nor should you even want to. Why do you want to rule the world? Because we know better than the rest of them. So we can force we... democracy on people? 
force them to be free? We if they don't want to be free. We want to give them two choices in elections. There goes another balloon. <laughs> God, you turn the other way. <laughs> you are the I gotta balloon, look over balloon police. <laughs> what is going on with you today? I call the cops. Yeah. You know what? To. All right, Randy probably you know, Josh, already did. Josh, sometimes I intentionally release balloons. Do you really? I do. On purpose. Where do you I, live? I live at 921 <laughs> Cowles, and I will be having a planned balloon release as a form of protest against your balloon interference <laughs> with my I'm just life. thinking, uh, I don't think I can find it right now, but in this politics of obedience, they talk about, he talks about this exact thing that's going on out here with a parade, right? How we, how our masters give us these games and give us these little deals like parades, give us permission to do that so we happily and freely, yay! As long as we have a little bit of sport, kind of like with the Romans, as long as we have a little bit of sport, a little bit of happiness, then we just keep going along with it. At yep. the same time, we're getting robbed, blind. But then they say, go play for a while, kids. So we go play, then we forget about our misery for a while, and then they just keep going. We keep giving them our consent because they give us just a little bit of pleasure along the way. Well, and, and, but they also give us just enough subsidy to make us think that we're actually getting a return. I mean, you look at the uh, the permanent fund, and you know what did Randy call it, a, a fuel rebate. Mm. Uh, whatever you want to call it, it's money that's coming from the government, and you didn't do a dang thing to earn it. Well, I do a lot of things to earn it, and they steal it from me. Every day. Let's see who's on the phone. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Good morning. This is Ben. Hey, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it doesn't matter who you vote in. Uh, uh, as, as long as we comply or uh, say that they can, they're going to do it. But uh, I want to tell you right now that the United States is a corporation, and all states under it are subcorporations. And if you read their laws... Their laws are are specifically written, and people don't understand it. For instance, what, uh, Title wait a minute, wait a minute. Can you hang on one second? Can I just, can yeah, I let just say that? It. Can I say that Alaska? For instance, uh, Alaska statutes Title 28 under registration requirements. There is an exception. For every law, there has to be uh, an open door. So under the DMV laws, under registration requirements, there is an exception that says you don't need a regist- you don't need to register or any- do anything else with your car if you're driving from private property to another. A- and every law uh, has a loophole. It- it- for instance, I'm not a person; I'm a man. The laws refer to persons. And as far as citizenship goes. Once you become a public uh, a servant, you are officially not does, a citizen. Can I ask a question? State. Sure. Yeah. By calling yourself a person, does that prevent you from being shot? <laughs> no, not by any. So am I, no. what, what gets your magic then? Do you pay your taxes? No, I don't. We, I don't. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm Minipak Eskimo native. I don't pay taxes. I've never paid taxes for at least ten years now. Sweet. Well, that's cool. I'm glad. You know, because I because I don't consent. Very simple. Nice. Well, if right on. There he goes. Okay. And thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Four five eight talk is the number for the sovereign citizen guys out there. And Aaron's getting wants to blow up. When it really comes down to it, it doesn't matter what you call yourself. It doesn't matter what the loophole is. It doesn't matter if you're a person. A man, a citizen, a sovereign, a little piece of poop. It doesn't matter. (laughs) They will kill you. You have to comply or they'll kill you on your, I mean, basically Mm -hmm. they, they don't look at it and decide, oh shoot, he found the loophole in the law. Now he has to go free. I tried that a long time ago in a very not so good part of my life and I went to jail a lot. They don't care about the law actually they just throw you in jail i had everything right i knew the laws inside out i had your magic words didn't get you out of jail my magic words got me in jail oh snap the only way this thing comes out is if many of us decide we're done but it It doesn't matter what we write down or what we call ourselves we just have to be done there yeah you know i i may i suggest something just on a um 
on a personal level here in terms of somebody who's looking for a way of non-compliance. Uh, if you do not feel that you have the uh, the moral fortitude or you don't want to take the risk of going to jail for not paying your taxes, may I suggest that you actually take as many exemptions as you possibly can from your taxes? Oh, yeah. Deny them the opportunity. Instead of waiting into getting a return from all the taxes you paid, take as many exemptions up front as you possibly can to starve the beast. And then if at the end of the year you have to go and you do your taxes and you find out that you owe them money, well, fine. Why give them an interest-free loan? What I think is funny is how many people think that the government is giving them money when they get a return. <laughs> yeah. That is the funniest thing I've ever I got my rebate check. Yeah. No, no, you got a little bit of your stolen money back. Uh, unless. Interest-free. Unless you're not paying taxes in the first place. If you claim enough exemptions that you don't have anything coming out of your paycheck, and then at the end you get a return, what is that? Because That's of the good stuff. Because of the, the, the earned income tax credit and these other issues? Mm-hmm. What, where I mean that's that's pretty much what are you what are you doing there I mean you're you're getting money from the government that you did not pay them in the first place well at least you're taking a little bit of money from them to me I think that's a great way of showing the protest as well because then that stretches it even further so that they have less money to send to Pakistan or to less money to airplane kill with. you with basically yeah. four five eight talk the number good morning caller who's this. This is Steve. Steve, go ahead. Yeah, you were talking about, you know, with the, with the Romans, the democracy and stupidity is what killed Rome. It's the same thing that will kill America. The Agreed. People, the people don't, they don't even know what their constitution, they don't know what rights we've lost, and they don't care. They only care about self-interest and what they can get from the government, and if anybody opposes, you were talking about defiance, most of the people will sit and agree, say, well, oh, this guy, well, he did this, he did that, oh, he didn't pay his taxes, or he defied the law. Or they'll turn they, in their neighbor for, for defying the law. Right, and and they 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 watch the police state grow and grow and do nothing about it and then make up an excuse for why the guy deserved what he got when they see him kick his door down and drag him off to jail. Right, that's exactly what Labuetti was saying in his writing, The Politics of obedience is that it is your own arms your own eyes that are getting you killed that are throwing you in jail it's not just necessarily you but your neighbor will do so because well it's like the chicken that gets out of the coop all the rest of the chickens go nuts they go hey look he's outside the fence he's outside the law go get him mm-hmm. so our own that- your own neighbor wants you not to be free your own neighbor wants to kill you that's really right mm-hmm. with, they're not there's no foreigners here enforcing law it is your neighbors it's your neighbor you're right and what? your own neighbor is is jealous i think there's a jealous envy when they see somebody defy the law that they don't have the backbone to do themselves they it, it's it's almost like a measure of their manhood this guy had backbone he had balls he he dared to defy the law and your neighbors will say, "Oh my gosh, I you know that that kind of makes me feel a little less of myself." So <laughs> that guy deserved what he got. Just uh, like what happened with the Occupy Fairbanks people. Yep. Remember, yep. they went down right, there right. to Occupy, and how many people called this station, saying, "How dare they do that without permission?" They right. don't have a permit. I can't do that. No, you won't do that. You're scared. Right. So let's you, beat up the guy that actually stands up. Right. That's, sick. That's exactly where the. And, and the Occupy Wall, Wall Street, those people, you know, people talk about communism and, oh, we're, you know, we're going to lose our rights to communism. And then they say, oh, but we need to preserve capitalism. Capitalism, communism is nothing more than capitalism totally unleashed, free will, let them have, let the banks, let the investment corporations, let them pick this country clean with no laws, no restrictions, and they will enslave America. Well, that's not necess- no, that's not capitalism. That's fascism. Well, yeah, but it's, <laughs> if you allow capitalism to run, if you you allow banks to run totally unregulated mm. and just make laws, banks are not capitalism have- either. No, that's fascism. You're talking, you're mixing up capitalism with fascism. Fascism is when the banks run the deal because the banks run it by the government allowing them to run the deal. Josh, when in history has economy. capitalism ever been allowed to run free? Ever? A few times. Well, uh, the uh, Industrial Revolution. Capitalism was rolling then, baby. 
the uh, different times in the colonies, capitalism was free and clear. They refused to pay the navigation acts and different this and that, and people made a lot of wealth. But when the banks are running the show, they're running the show with the auspices of – with the permission and the power backing by, of the government. That's when the government's involved in the banking. They're involved in the big corporations. That's You're talking about fascism. Capitalism is a good thing. Capitalism is when – I go out and I see something at Aaron's store that I want and I give him some money and he gives me the deal. Or I give him whatever he thinks is a value and I get my gun. Capitalism is how you end up with Sam Walton. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I mean, I agree that capitalism is what built and makes and there's lots of people that start from dirt farmers became billionaires. It's when those billionaires control my Congress and make themselves monopolies and then make laws to it. Just like the Obama thing. They say, oh, that's all Obama health care. That's nothing more than the insurance companies mandating that we buy their product. No, you're a good point. But then that's not capitalism anymore. It's fascism. No. Right. It, we don't it, want to mix that up because then you give the other side a little bit of power. Go, look, see, we need to be communists or socialists because capitalism is bad. It's not bad. What we have... We it's so distorted now because we don't have a free market, right? We think we, we have, do, but we don't. But I'm, I would say we've never had a free market we in, have the, a in this country, market. ever. We, no. we, there's always some kind of level of interference, and a lot of it goes yeah. back to 1890 with the uh, the what is it? Not not trade busting, the trust busting mm-hmm. in the 1890s. If you, if you think about it in terms of what is going on now, even you yourself talking about being forced to buy something, that's not capitalism. It, that if if I cannot choose to exchange with somebody else on my terms and on their terms, then we're not free. And, and that has to do with anything, not just money. Right. Well, how how are they going to enforce this Obama mandated insurance? And I'm sure the insurance companies are jumping for joy that got this because now they're going to be able to enforce. Are they going to be walking in restaurants and arresting people for eating bacon because that guy has high cholesterol? Uh, not supposed to have salt. That guy's bad. Arrest him too. They're going, How are they going? To- they're going to enforce it because we're going to comply. They're not going to have to enforce it. There'll be very few people that won't comply. Very, very few. They're not worried about it because they know that good old American people are going to bow their knee and, and say, "Okay, we comply." Even though 60% of the people in this nation think it's a crap law. They don't think it's constitutional. They don't think it's even moral or anything. They're still going to comply and, with it. And why will they comply with it? Because they are, they're intimidated. They fear the police state that, that enforces it. I think it's a little more than that, too. They not only fear it, but now that it's a law and the Supreme Court mm-hmm. said it's okay, they automatically think, well, it's okay. I guess I have to do it now because uh, and, and, they right, said so. Right back to what he said. He said nobody knows the Constitution anymore. It isn't the Constitution, our Constitution, what created that atmosphere. The free entry into government legitimizes all government that we have. Anything that would be viewed as by another people as tyranny is viewed as legitimate because of the free entry into government. And the Supreme Court, the ultimate arbitrator of the Constitution, said it was constitutional. And it is. And it is. Because they have the power to make a tax. Yep. Well, and, you know, how many times do I mean, you hear people say it, yeah. g- elections have consequences? The reason why we have this is because elections have consequences. You're absolutely right, too. They have consequences. Every time we go and vote, you're going to get a consequence of that vote. And so, sure but, but they use that to then to, to make, count, make people count out of the idea of, I have to go, I have to go vote. No, then it's your it, fault. In the very beginning right. of the creation of our government, we gave the power the, to the legislator to unilaterally create legislated law, paper law, and to tax us. So, right, the Constitution gives easy. Congress the power to tax, basically. And, and to the legislate Supreme, law. Right, and the Supreme Court said that that power has no... Bridge. There's nothing, or not bridge, but that has no, no stoppage. Ceiling. Yeah, there's nothing to you stop it. You can tax these people however much you want. The only uh, remedy, really, that uh, the people had were the ones at 1776. Even oh. the remedy that we had when uh, that we could leave, like uh, the like South did, secession. The secession, that remedy's gone. So the only remedy we have, since we can't secede mm-hmm. is to not comply if you don't like it leave John. well yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay and where do you leave to i that's well, why i'm, I'm just i'm making a joke out of the south right. the I know, south I didn't know. like it and left 
Well, right, and I've heard, well, yeah, in the South legally legally left the Union, and we had a big government president, which was a Republican, which went in there and conquered the South and mandated that they come back into this Union. If the, if Alaska was to pull out of the Union, and this is the last place, where else are we going to go to? If Alaska does not cut off the blood money from the feds coming up here, they will, Alaska selling out the, the state like a whore, to the federal government to put money in here and dictate to us the laws that they want enforced on us. Let's Looking. just let's just suppose for a minute that we seceded from the union. Alaska, the lone state, came out from under the union. It was allowed to. What would that look like on the other side? Wouldn't we create a government just like the one we had? Yeah, we have a pretty socialistic government right now. We and our constitution is probably the most socialist mm-hmm. constitution there is in the union. So I'd probably leave. You don't even have rights to the, the the ground underneath you. If this place if this place seceded from the union, I would flee quickly. Y'all. Yeah, I mean, don't. you hear it every day when guys call into this show. I mean, we would set up a power structure much like the one we had, but the more local it is, the more oppressive it is. Mm-hmm. The, you guarantee there wouldn't be a free market, um, liberty minded movement up here. No, we'd be a bunch of communists. Well, Everybody it's, it's, would grab all they could as fast as they could. Power wise. It, it's getting to be that way already because we have the federal money coming in and they are mandating laws to the state and the state is enforcing it. And I I you were talking about non compliance. I found out what non compliance will get to just a couple weeks ago. I drove I went and drove a vehicle away from the DOT check. They said it was a a commercial vehicle. I climbed in a three-quarter ton pickup with less than 10,000 pounds. <clears throat> Drove it out to the mine site. Within 20 minutes, I had four troopers out here to arrest me. And now I have a $5,000 fine and assault charges against the troopers for defying and, and resisting arrest. Yeah, that ticks it, me off. It uh, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the law that they were trying to enforce They've already gone beyond that. Now it's just assault on a trooper. Right, because they were wrong in the beginning, right? Because you were in a three-quarter ton. You were in the, right, the, and the DOT is doing that a lot more. They pull you over if you're driving a pickup if they decide that they want to make you a commercial vehicle or not. Right. And then I know several people that have just driven off. I've done it myself. Well, and then yeah. they call and the troopers out, and then they bust you up because you refuse to comply. Whether they're yeah. right or wrong, it doesn't matter. You're still going down, baby. Right. And the troopers didn't come out with an arrest warrant. They came out with tasers and ready to, and I told them to move their vehicles or I'd doze them out of the way. And so they got ready to put the tasers away and get the 40 Smith or the 40 Glocks out. So I got out and started moving their vehicles out of my way so I could continue working. And you got tased? Yeah, you know, two or three times. Yeah, I, I remember reading, reading your story in the newspaper. You got tased quite a bit. And did the... Uh... Did any of your legislators or governor come and talk to you to find out why this happened to you, or are they just letting it go? No, they don't care. Yeah. They're, wor- they're worried about, you know, vote for them. And That's because uh, we need elect- to vote in the right people. <laughs> right. And who are those? That's, that's the, you know, how do you, the, the media is controlled by the money, uh, the whole works, and they put up, if you read all of them's campaign rhetoric it's all the same and every one of them sound like they're going to be so pro-constitutional they're going to cut taxes they're going to eliminate federal control of the state it's the same thing over and over again and it i don't see any change yeah and just like no. this, well, I, i've given up on voting i haven't voted in 20 years i, I see it as just a waste of my time uh if ron paul had made the Republican ticket, I would have registered and gone down and vote, not because I agree with Republicans. I agree with the Republic, but I do not agree with the Republican platform. The Republic is They're, dead, my friend. The Republicans are Democrats, too. Therefore, and, democracy. Look how many times did George Bush say we're, we're preserving democracy. For the world. For the world, yes. And, uh, and I, I could read where our forefathers said to prevent this great republic from ever becoming a democracy, yep. which is what we have become. Yeah. And, okay. uh, Thanks, you know, Nicole. just for folks that uh, someone was talking about David Eastman earlier, how we need to get him elected and this and that. We're not going to have David Eastman on the show because lots of reasons. But the main reason 
If we let him on, then we have to let his opponents on. Equal and I time. do yeah. not want to listen to Mick or Hick or whatever their name is. Click. I don't want to listen to Click, <laughs> and I don't want to listen to Seekins. We're not going to have them on the show. So, Mr. Nope. Eastman's, Eastman's not coming on no, either. No candidates. We're not giving. So there you go. No equal time. No you equal don't offer, time. It's equally no time. This is, is a dictatorship is. radio show. <laughs> I was just, you beat me to it. <laughs> but anyways, what that guy was talking about, how come he got tasered and none of his representatives are out there finding out if this was a legitimate use of force by the government? That's because ridiculous. in their mind, it is a legitimate use of because force the, because he didn't comply. Because the police did it. So if the and, police did it, then yeah, it must and be. Way okay. deep, it's way deeper than him not complying. It's because the police did it. I was pulled over before when uh, I had my skidster on my trailer pulling with my pickup and the DOT pulling, uh, and they tried to give me a ticket. And I fought them forever and said, show me where I'm in commerce. I'm not in commerce. Whoa, you weigh this. Who cares how much my pickup weighs? I'm going to my house to use my skidster, and I fought him and fought him and fought him. I was right. Finally, they just let left me alone because I would have went to court or whatever, and they were wrong. It is worth arguing with them and stuff with that, but I don't know. I don't know if I'd drive off and get shot because that's ultimately what happens. And then there's no recourse. Yeah. Your governor is not going to come out and find out if his police were abusing their powers. He didn't care. And in this case, I believe the gentleman they called is also facing assault charges because he used his bulldozer against a state trooper's vehicle. Were they on his property? Yes. Doesn't matter. Oh, he used right. his vehicle against their vehicle. He committed assault. We are out of time, guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>